Hello everyone. In this video, we learn about the behavioral modeling in Verilog HDL. The gate level and data modeling are mostly used for the combinational circuits, whereas the behavioral modeling supports both combinational as well as the sequential circuit designing. The behavioral modeling is the highest level of abstraction in the Verilog HDL, and a designer needs to know only the algorithm of the design. So he doesn't need to know either the circuit or the Boolean expression, only the algorithm is the basic essential requirement to start with the designing of any magic circuit. The other modeling techniques like the gate level and the data flow are relatively detailed in the sense that in the gate level you need to know the logic circuit diagram and in the data flow level the Boolean expression is required for the designing of the circuit. The development rate in the behavioral modeling is the highest this we'll see later with the help of the examples. Now, whenever we have to write down the design modules using the behavioral modeling, the two most important constructs used in the modeling are initial and the always block. And all the other behavioral statements will appear only inside either the initial or the always procedural constructs. This we'll see with the help of the examples later. Now, let us start with the initial construct first. The statements which will come under the initial construct, we call them as the initial block. And the initial block is always executed only once in the simulation, and the simulation time starts at time t equal to 0. There can be some cases where you can have more than one initial blocks also. If this is the case, then all the initial blocks are executed concurrently. This we'll see later with the help of the example. Now, let us take two examples over here. In this example, first of all, we see that this initial block has just one statement. So, this has just one statement, whereas in second example, this initial block has two statements over here. So, whenever the initial block has more than one statement, we have to enclose them between begin and end. This is what you have to remember. If there is just one statement within the initial block, then the begin and end Keywords are not required, but if you use the begin and end in case of a single uh, statement within the initial block, it doesn't result in an error, but really it is not required. Now, let us take an example over here where we see that this is our stimulus module, and in this particular module, let us try to see how many initial blocks we have. So, this is first initial block, this is the second initial block the third initial block and four initial block. So in this module we have four initial blocks. All the four initial blocks as I told you they will be executing concurrently. So the execution will start simultaneously for all the initial blocks. So let us look at how the output of this particular design uh, sorry the stimulus would look like. Now over here in the first initial block we just have a one statement and this statement will execute at time t equal to 0. Whereas in the second block this statement will execute at time t equal to 5 whereas this will execute at 30 units. This will execute at 10 and this will execute at 35 and at 50 the simulation will finish. So how the output table would look like? You can see from here at time t equal to 0 since this statement will execute so we will have m equal to 0. At time t equal to 5 this statement executes, so we get a equal to 1. Then after 5, which statement will execute? This statement will execute because this is occurring as the first statement in this initial block. So after 10, x will become 0. Then at 30, b will become 0. And at 35, this statement will execute. This becomes y. And at time t equal to 50, the simulation finishes. So we see if we have multiple initial blocks, all the initial blocks are executing parallelly or concurrently. And the simulation time in all these initial blocks, the initial simulation time is 0. Now, the always construct. The statements which will come under the always construct, they will constitute the always block. The always block, like the initial block, will start at time t equal to 0, but it works like an infinite loop. So, always block will execute over and over again, whereas the initial block executed just once. So that is the main difference between the initial block and the always block. Initial block executes once whereas always block executes over and over again until the simulation stops. 
Now let us see how the always construct can be used to generate a clock with a time period 10 units. Can you think of generating clock signal with say time period 10 units without using any hardware? Yes, we can do. So let us see how. So say this kind of a signal we want to generate and how the always construct will be using to generate a clock with a time period 10 units. So we just need these two statements. So these two statements will generate a clock with a time period of 10 units. Let us try to understand how this code works. So over here we have both the initial construct as well as the always block. In the initial block we just have a one statement which says that initially we want the clock to be zero. Then within the always block again we have just one statement. Now let us try to understand how this works. So after a delay initially clock was zero, then after a delay of five clock will become the complement. So clock will become high. Then since this statement will keep on executing again and again, so what will happen after another five units? So it will become low. So it will keep on toggling. The clock will keep on toggling after every five units of time, and you will be able to generate a clock with a time period of ten units. So isn't it simple to generate a clock using just the simple Verilog codes, and you can generate a clock, and there's no need to use any kind of a hardware. So these clock signals are used in the sequential circuits. I'll give you a few exercises. You can see whether you can generate these clocks if you have understood the concept. So if I ask you to design a clock with time period 20 units with a clock equal to zero initially. So the code would be something like this. Initially we want a clock to be zero. So the first statement will be something like this. And then the second statement will be this because we want a clock to be a time period of 20 units. So we will have to toggle it after every 10 units. Now let us look at the second problem over here. We want to generate a time period 100 units and but the clock should be 1 at t equal to 0. So I think this is clear. Initially we want clock to be high. So within the initial block it will be this and within the always block after every 50 units we have to keep on toggling so that we get a time period of 100 units. Now the final problem, the third problem say design a clock with t on equal to 20 units and t of equal to 5 units. And initially we wanted to be this. So let us look at the code here. Now over here within the always block we don't have a single statement but we have two statements so that is why we need to use begin and end. Initially we want the clock to be zero so we will use this statement within the initial block and within the always block after five units we will make it high. Because t of s5. So after 5 units clock become high and then after 20 units the clock will become low. So this always block will keep on executing again and again. So we see that clock remains high for how much time for 20 units of time and clock remains low for how much time for 5 units of time. So this is a quote. So we have seen how the behavioral modeling can be used to generate the clock and we have learned about the initial block and the always block. What is the difference between the initial and always block? The initial block statements are executed once, whereas always block statements executed are repeatedly again and again until the simulation stops. So I hope you have understood the basic concept of the behavioral modeling used in Verilog HDL and how the always construct can be used to generate the clock signals without using any hardware circuit.